This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Razor Blade 14 for 2021 with AMD Ryzen inside, a first for Razer, putting AMD inside, and otherwise you can say everything old is new again, because with Razer, it all started with a 14-inch size years ago. Of course, this one is much more evolved, and it's basically a smaller version of the 15-inch, which is a good thing. How's the performance? How are the thermals? Well, we're going to look at it now. So no doubt, Razer noticed last year that ASUS was really going to town with the rogue Zephyrus G14 14-inch gaming laptop. Uh, more performance than you usually would see in a 14-inch laptop. Of course, with the ASUS, the price was pretty nice too. Razer being a little bit more boutique, well, it's going to cost more. It starts at $1,799, cost, we call that $1,800, and goes all the way up to $2,800 because, you know, this is like a little BMW M2 versus the cheaper big muscle car out there. That's what they do. You get that CNC aluminum chassis and the anodized black finish, which means it won't scratch off the black finish. And of course, the green snake on the lid, which you can choose to turn the back lighting off on, but it will still be a green snakey snake on the lid. AMD inside is an exciting thing, and I think that's what allowed them to make this in a 14-inch size because Ryzen is typically better with thermals and also with power consumption, all that sort of thing. And we've got NVIDIA RTX graphics inside. Basically the higher end of Max-Q. They're all 100 watt. You can get it with a 3060, a 3070, or an 8 gig 3080 GPU inside. And now a shout out to our sponsor, FlexiSpot, and their sit-to-go fitness chair. So what is this? This is a combination of an exercise bike and an office chair. It's height adjustable. It's very sturdily built. I was pretty impressed by this. And it has gravity wheels, which means you can roll it around just fine, put it where you want. But once you sit on it, it compresses on the wheels so you don't go slip sliding anywhere. The height adjustment on this goes pretty high and it goes well with their standing desks from FlexiSpot. But uh, keep in mind, this is a bent knee position desk, as you can see, so you're not going to get a full leg extension on it. It has the things you'd expect on an exercise bike, like a resistance setting on it. And you can even measure your fitness, your calories, your RPMs, and all that sort of thing on the digital display. It has a mesh back that's very breathable. I do appreciate that for good posture and a nice cushy, comfy seat as well. So now you can go to boot camp while your PC boots up. You don't even have to get off your bum to get fit. Be sure to visit the link in the description. Now back to our video. Now we've got vapor chamber cooling inside, which certainly should help. No liquid metal, and I will talk about the cooling, believe me. And that vapor chamber is huge. It covers much of the interior of the laptop's motherboard. Wow, you know. Uh, but some of the pain points for making this smaller are only 16 gigs of RAM, and that RAM is soldered on. And for those of you who become RAM aficionados, now that that's a thing to focus on, this is single rank RAM, not dual rank RAM, though at least the timings aren't that bad. We have an M.2 SSD inside and Wi-Fi 6E. And now let's talk about the ports a little bit. We've got no Thunderbolt here, unlike other Razer laptops with Intel, because Thunderbolt intellectual property of Intel yeah, so you have USB-C times two, and that's 3.2 Gen 2, and both of them support DisplayPort 1.4 out and uh, power delivery charging as well, though really this needs more watts for charging than a USB-C charger would typically offer, so there's that. But anyway, a little helpful there for those of you who want to use external monitors, and you just might want to do this because there is no MUX switch here. This seems to be so common this year for Ryzen-based laptops. Not all of them. I mean, Lenovo Legion 5 Pro that we reviewed does have a MUX switch on board, but or Advanced Optimus also, you know, missing on this laptop. Aha! Uh -huh. So that means the internal paddle routes through the iGPU, the Radeon Vega, but still uses the, the RTX GPU, but you might see a little bit of a frame hit. But if you plug it into USB-C and then route it through DisplayPort, then you're going to get the DGPU direct connection there and G-Sync as well. And on the internal panel, you get free sync only, not G-Sync. So there it is if you want to gain some frames. That said, I was when I was testing it, I tested it with Cyberpunk 2077, and I tested on the internal panel and on a... QHD resolution LG gaming monitor, and uh, there is about a five frames per second difference, so it's not a huge difference there if you can't route directly through the DGPU. All right, end of that geeky moment there. 
We also have HDMI 2.1, and that's good. New standard there, so in theory, you can do 4K at 120 hertz. I say in theory because you're going to have to make sure you get the right cable and a monitor that supports it. If you've got a fancy pants OLED TV that does that, well, more power to you, then that will obviously work as well. Of course, you've got a headphone jack as well on board. So that's your port selection. Oh, and the two USB-A, which are also 3.2 Gen 2. No Ethernet or any of those other sort of things. So what about the display. So there are two display options. If you get the RTX 3060 GPU, that comes with the full HD 144 hertz panel, which is 100% uh, of sRGB coverage. We have a RTX 3070, and the 3070 and the 3080 are bundled with the QHD, or 2K resolution, with full P3 color gamut display, 165 hertz refresh rate and around a 10 millisecond response time, as our tests say. So that's a very pretty display. It's very sharp. It's reasonably bright, not as bright as some business Ultrabooks or Macs, but when it exceeds 300 nits, so that's pretty good. Colors on this are nice. Clarity looks good. The contrast looks better than it actually measures, so it's a very crispy looking display. One thing I will say is it doesn't look like any kind of blue light to me because it has that kind of brightness that feels a little harsh on the eyes. Maybe a minor quibbling point and no PWM. So that's lovely stuff. So what about the cooling and the performance on this? This has the Ryzen 9 5900HX CPU. So that's a 45 watt CPU that's eight cores that goes up against Intel's 11th gen eight core i7 CPU. And it's not the 5900HS that we see ASUS using in the Rogue Zephyrus G14 and G15 fit in like gaming laptops. So Razer wanted to say that this is the most powerful 14-inch gaming laptop in the world. And, you know, I think they're right. So that means using the HX, even though the HS CPU that's 35 watts performs nearly as well and doesn't get nearly as hot. And I kind of wish they had gone with that, but they did want to say they had the most powerful. So we got the full Monty, more powerful one that you would find in something like a high-end Lenovo Legion gaming laptop or the ASUS Rogue Strix SCAR models, okay? And then we have our 80 to 100 watts, 100 watt boost, RTX graphics inside. Again, we have the 3070. So that's more wattage than you're going to see on the Zephyrus models. So that's nice. So you get a little more performance. Again, yes, this is the most powerful 14-inch gaming laptop. The temperatures, though, despite the vapor chamber, they do use conventional paste, not liquid metal. And uh, I am tempted to try repacing it just to see what's going on here because our CPU temperatures were so very high, which is kind of unusual for Ryzen, and the GPU temperatures were great. GPU temperatures usually are better, but in this case, the difference was so extreme, I found it a little bit startling given the unified vapor chamber design. Anyway, you could try something on liquid metal, but given the fact that vapor chambers tend to be very thin and liquid metal kind of bonds and changes the substance of the heat sink, I might be a little leery of doing that. Maybe a repaste job. If I do repaste it and it runs cooler, I'll actually post another video about that. Anyway, testing a variety of games. Now, this is when you see our gaming footage, we're going for the, the full Monty here. So we're using DirectX 12 where available. We're using the highest possible settings in the games, and we're playing at QHD resolution, so 2560 by 1440. We're not playing at 1080p. We're not slumming there. So that explains the frame rates. In some cases, not being as high as you might expect. We're not running at 1080p. Uh, but the temperatures here, now we were running it at first on the most powerful profile, which is the boost mode for the CPU and the highest power for the GPU using Razer Synapse software. And the CPU was in the 90s. And our ambient temperature is about 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Get your calculator to convert that to centigrade. Sorry, off the top of my head. Do not know. Anyway, not too hot, not too cold. I don't like those CPU temperatures much. I'm not too happy with that. The surface temperatures are great on this zone. It is cooler than the Rogue Zephyrus G14, which really transfers heat to the casing, so that part's nice. But CPU temperatures are high on our unit. GPU temperatures were absolutely fine. So I tried switching it to the balanced profile, figuring, okay, it's not pushing it so far. It's not boosting the CPU, yada, yada. It still ran just as hot, if not a little bit hotter. I tried using the manual fan setting and setting it pretty high, like at 4,800 RPM, still ran pretty high. So the CPU will just get toasty on this. The noise is typical razor blade, which is to say, not loud, really not loud. A little on the high pitch side, but not an annoying kind of high pitched. And if you're using it for productivity work, the fans will run and the unit will always feel warm unless you live in the Antarctic or something like that. Uh, but 
pretty well controlled. When you're gaming, still not really loud, honestly, even though the fans are going at pretty high RPM. And those are pretty beefy fans. So the keyboard on this is per key Razer Chroma RGB backlit, so you can go to town, lighting effects up the wazoo, and you can program each key if you want to do that. And it feels exactly like a Razer Blade, which is to say pretty short travel and not much tactility. It's not my favorite keyboard. I would prefer the Rogue Zephyrus keyboards, honestly. And I've never been a fan of the Razer keyboard. It's at best competent, and that's all there is. For gaming, you're probably going to use an external keyboard or something like that. Then the usual Microsoft Precision Glass trackpad, that's very good. So lastly, there's battery life. We do not have a big battery in here either. And to make that giant vapor chamber and all that sort of thing, that's another thing that took a hit. 61.6 watt hour batteries. So when you're comparing that to something like the Rogue Zephyrus G14 that has a 76 watt hour battery or the G15 Zephyrus that has a 90 watt hour battery, well, Plus, you got pretty performant hardware in here, even if it does have switchable graphics and all that sort of thing. Uh, we were getting about seven to eight hours, 200 nits of brightness, doing light productivity and stream work. Obviously, if you're pushing it harder, which you might, since you're buying such a powerful laptop, you could get shorter run times if you're pushing it with Adobe Premiere or something like that. It comes with a 230 watt power supply, which is more than adequate for what this machine needs, so you shouldn't see the battery discharging ever. So for those of you who are thinking about this versus the ASUS Zephyrus G14, its only other direct competitor, well, the ASUS is $300 cheaper. However, you can only get the ASUS with an RTX 3060. There's no 3070 or 3080 options on board, and it is a lower wattage GPU. That does help thermals a bit, though. The surface temperatures are, I'd say, hotter on the G14, but the CPU temperatures are better, thanks to that HS CPU. And both of them are available with the same Full HD and QHD display options and the QHD on both are wide gamut P3, but the refresh rate's a little higher on the Razer Blade. Razer Blade has per key keyboard. The G14 is a single zone. You can pick any color you want, but it's going to be only one color. But the typing feel, the tactile feel, and key travel are better on the G14. Likewise, battery life, since the G14 has a lower power processor, in a bigger battery too, battery life is going to be better on the G14. So it's holding its own, even if it's not necessarily going to be faster than the Blade. But the performance numbers are pretty darn close if you're looking at 3060 versus 3060. And for the Zephyrus G15, well, you're going up in size, but you gain ports like Ethernet there as well, with the option to get a 3070 on board too. Disassembly is the same as other razors. You just unscrew the Torx T5 screws and lift up from the back. It's pretty easy to do. And there's our cover, our big grills for the fan. Here are the two large fans and one very immense vapor chamber cooler here. So, yeah, M.2 SSD 2280 PCIe 3 here. That's all that is supported with this Ryzen platform. It scored fast, so I have no complaints. Our Wi-Fi 6E card is right here. That is socketed, so that's upgradable. No RAM. It's soldered on, like I said. No RAM slots, I should say. So even the G14, where people complain it only had one slot, well, here we have none. So that's all there is. And other than that, we have our speaker drivers, which are up-facing surrounding the keyboard. This is the bottom side of them over here, and the 61-watt-hour battery. Pretty tight design. You can see where they really couldn't fit a bigger battery in here or RAM slots. Let's face it. And as ever, since the RAM is soldered, they only offer it with 16 gigs of RAM. Probably didn't have room to solder more, so no, nothing you can do about that. And no matter which configuration you pick, you do get a one terabyte SSD. You could upgrade it and put a higher capacity in yourself, but they ship it with a one terabyte. So the difference between the 3060, 3070, and 3080 is pretty much just which GPU you get. And well, the base model has just the full HD display, while the 3070 and the 3080 have the QHD display. So that's the Razer Blade 14 for 2021 with AMD Ryzen inside. And indeed, they're not kidding. This is currently the most powerful 14-inch gaming laptop. And it, as usual, has that chill kind of look. Other than the Green Snake logo, you could take the word. You could say, hey, this is nice looking. I would say much as the Zephyrus units from Asus look cool, this is still more premium looking. Uh, the only thing that I'm not too thrilled with here are the CPU temperatures, which are pretty darn hot. But at least it's not too, too hot to the touch, nor too noisy and the performance is quite good. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.